Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 4, Simplifying Square Roots. Classwork opening exercise. So that means, exercise means, try it on your own, pause the video, come back, and then check your answers. Okay, so here we go. What does a square root of 16 equal? Now remember what I said in a prior video. If you had a square and it's under the radical symbol, then that means that the area of some square is 16. And what it means is when it says what's the square root of 16 equal, it's saying what does one side of that square equal? Because 4 times 4 is 16. Area is length times width. Square root, square root, we're talking about a square, okay? So the square root of 16, the area of a square, this, this okay, the area of a square that is 16 has side lengths of 4. So the square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 36 is, what times itself is 36, and that would be 6 times 6. What does 4 times 4 equal? 16. What does 6 times 6 equal? 36. So what they're saying is, if you take the square root of 16, you get 4. You take 4 times 4, you get 16. Then it's asking, does the square root of 16 equal the square root of 4 times 4? Well, yes it does. And then if I take the square root of 36, I get 6. If I take that answer and multiply it by itself, I get back to that 36. So does the square root of 36 equal 6 times 6? And the answer is yes. The square root of 36 equals the square root of 6 times 6. Part C. What does the square root of 121 equal? Well, it's asking what times itself is 121, and the answer is 11. And then it's saying, well, what's 11 times 11? 121. Does 121 equal the square root of 11 times 11? And the answer is yes. What's a, does the square root of 81 equal? 9 times 9 is 81, so the square root of 81 is 9. What does 9 times 9 equal? 81. And therefore, 80, square root of 81 equals the square root of 9 times 9. So the answer is yes. E, rewrite the square root of 20 using at least one perfect square factor. So what they're saying is... They want us to factor 20. Factors of 20 are 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 3 does not go into 20 evenly, 4 times 5, and whenever we get to a point where the two numbers are right next to each other on the number line, in, uh, consecutive integers, if you will, then if I continue, I'm just repeating and flipping them over. So the next number would be 5 times 4, 10 times 2, 20 times 1. So there's no need to continue once we get to this point. And they said to factor using at least one perfect square. And the only perfect square in here is 4. So the square root of 20 equals the square root of 4 times 5. Okay, and whenever we have multiplication underneath the radical, we can split them up. So that is also equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So I can give each term under the radical when multiplying its own radical symbol. And then I can simplify this. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 5 just stays that. So if you plug that in your calculator, if you put 2 square root 5 in your calculator, it will tell you that it would equal the same thing as plugging in the square root of 20. Okay, 28. Now we're doing the same thing here. So I'm going to look for factors of 28. Let me change colors. So I'm looking for factors of 28. Factors of 28 are 1 times 28. 2 times 14. 3 does not go into 28. 4 does not go into 28. Um, 5 does not go, 6, 7, 8, 7 does, 4 times 7, 4 times 7 is 28, there's one with a perfect square, so the square root of 28 equals the square root of 4 times 7, 
which equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 7, which equals 2 square root 7. So if you put 2 square root 7 in your calculator and then you put square root of 28 in your calculator, you'll get the same decimal approximation. Example 1. Simplify the square root as much as possible. So I've actually already been doing this. I'm going to do a factor tree of 50. Or not factor tree, factor table. 1 times 50, 2 times 25, and I'm looking for perfect squares. So let's just make a list of perfect squares over here. 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8, 9 times 9, 10 times 10. I'll just go up to there. Okay, I'm looking for these numbers in my factors. Obviously, 25 is here because it's right here. So I can stop right there and say that the square root of 50 equals the square root of 2 times 25. And then split that up and say that that is the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 25 is 5. And then the radical 2 just tags along. So 5 square root 2 is equal to the square root of 50. Okay, square root of 28. Do a factor tree of 28. We've already done it, but I'll do it again. 1 times 28, 2 times 14, 4 times 7. Perfect square, perfect square. Square root of 4 times 7 equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 7 equals 2 square root 7. Okay, simplify the square root as much as possible. So I'm going to keep going with this same process. 18 is 1 times 18, 2 times 9. I'm going to stop right there because there's a 9. There's my perfect square 9 right here. So the square root of 18 equals the square root of 9 times 2, which equals the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. So there is my simplified square root. Okay, square root of 44. So, if, hello. So if I do 44 factors, then it's 1 times 44. 2 times 22. 3 won't go. 4 times 11. 4 is a perfect square. So the square root of 44 equals the square root of 4 times 11. which equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 11, which equals, now I haven't said this yet, but 4 is the same as 2 squared. So if I leave it under the radical, I can say 2 squared under the radical, and those are inverse operations, which whenever we take the inverse of something, they cancel each other out. So the square root of 2 squared the 2 and the radical cancel, just leaving us with 2 radical 11. That's another way of thinking about the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is the square root of 2 squared, and the radical and the power cancel each other out. And we get 2 radical 11. Okay, the square root of 169 equals, I'm going to come over here where there's more room, and do factors of 169 which are 1 times 169. 2 will not go because it's odd. 3 will not go. Um, I don't know if you remember the trick to find factors of 3. If I take 1 plus 6 plus 9, I'm adding up these three values, I get 16. If I add up every term in a the, the hundreds, the tens, and the ones terms in the number, and it gives me a number divisible by 3, then the big number is divisible by 3. 3 will not go into 16, so 3 will not go into 169. Okay. The only factors of 169 are 1 in, in itself, and 13 times 13 is 169, so I can rewrite that as 
13 times 13, but that's the same as saying the square root of 13 squared, because anything times itself is squared. And just like up here where I showed you 2 squared, square root of 2 squared is 2, the square root of 13 squared is 13. Okay, square root of 75. So I take 75. Factors of 75 are 1 times itself. 2 won't go. 3, 7 plus 5 is 12. Remember that rule for 3? 7 plus 5 equals 12. 12 is divisible by 3, so so is 75. 3 goes into 7 twice with the remainder of 1. 3 goes into 15 five times. 4 will not go. 5 will go into 7 once. 5 goes into 25, 15. But I don't need to continue because I've got a perfect square right here. So square root of 75 equals the square root of 25 times 3, which equals the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, which equals 5 times 3, or square root of 3, I mean. So the answer is 5 square root 3. Remember, 25 is 5 squared. 5 squared square roots cancel, leaving me with 5. Okay, more examples again. 128 is 1 times itself, 2 times 64. Now if I go back, let me go get my perfect squares. Okay, here's my list of perfect squares up to 100. Well, 64, 64. Square root of 128 is... 64 times 2, which equals square root of 64 times the square root of 2, which equals 8 square root 2. 288 is 1 times itself. 2 times 144. Now I didn't continue here. 11 times 11 is 121. 12 times 12 is 144. We have a perfect square right there. So I'm just going to say 288 is 144. 144 times 2, which equals the square root of 144 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 144 is 12 squared. Square root of 12 squared is 12. And then the radical 2 stays right there. Okay, simplify the square root of 108. So the first thing I do is factor it. Find the factors of it, I should say. 1 times 108. 2 times 54. 8. 1 plus 0 plus 8 equals 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so so is 108. 3 times 3 is 9 with the remainder of 1. And that is 18. 3 goes into 18 6 times. There's my perfect square. So 108 is the square root of 36 times 3, which equals the square root of 36 times the square root of 3, which equals 6 square root 3. Simplify the square root of 250. Well, 250 is, and once you get the hang of this, then you start to see things, the better you get with, factoring, and knowing your multiplication tables. So I just moved this down here. Um, 250 is 25 times 10. So I'm just going to cut to the chase here. And 250 is 10 times 25. So that is going to equal the square root of 25 times 10, which equals the square root of 25 times the square root of 10, which equals 5 square root 10. Now, you always have to ask yourself if the other one can be factored down. So factors of 10 are 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. Are there any perfect squares in there? And the answer is no. Okay, simplify 200. Okay, well, 200 is 2 times 100, and that's a perfect square. So this is going to equal the square root of 100 
times 2, which equals the square root of 100 times the square root of 2, which equals 10 square root 2. Simplify 504. 1 times itself. 2 times 252. 3 times 5 plus 4 is 9. 3 goes into 5 once. 3 goes into 26 times. 3 goes into 24 8 times. 3 times 168. Four goes into five once, four goes into ten twice, four goes into twenty-four six times. Five won't work. Six. Six times eighty-four. Seven times seventy-two. Okay, so this was a long one, so I decided to do behind the scenes a little bit. So it's 7 times 72, 8 times 63, 9 times 56. Okay, so there's a perfect square. And here's a perfect square. 12 times 42. No, it's not a perfect square. Disregard that. 9 times 56 is the perfect square. So that is the square root of 9 times 56. And the square root of 9 times times the square root of 56. Therefore, the square root of 9 is 3, square root of 56. Okay, now I'm going to check 56 just in case. So I'm going to take 56 and do a factor tree, or table on that. Uh, 2 times 28, 4 times 7 is 28. So 4 times 6, 14. Okay, so there's another perfect square in 56. So I'm not done yet. So let me go back up here. Let me erase this piece. And let's continue. So the square root of 56 this is 3 and the square root of 56 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 14 and therefore that's 3 times the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 14 wow And therefore, my answer is 3 times 2, which is 6, square root 14. Okay, so what I'm going to point out to you now is if you stop short, you need to check the other term. But if you just continued, my next term would have been 14. Hey, Siri, what's 504 divided by 14? 14 is 36. Okay, so if I continued down to here, I would have gotten my 36 here, and the square root of 36 is ding, 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 6. Okay, so all I'm trying to point out here is if you find a perfect square in your factor table, there may be more. So if you continued your factoring all the way down until your two numbers got close together, such as up here where they... Where was it? On the last page. You probably should do a factor table until you get to the two numbers being um, within one of each other. Right, like right here, 4, 7. If I continued, that would be 7 times 4, and it's just repetition. So do that until you see a flipped repeat in your table, and you will find the largest perfect square. Or check a smaller number after you found a perfect square. Make sure you don't stop here. Or, yeah, do not stop at 9 times 56. Okay, so that is the end of lesson four. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.